Note Spaghetti. Today we've got a really big one for you. I've been working on this add-on for about three years. You've read the title of the video, you know what, we're, what you're about to get. Node-based rigging. I think I finally earned my name. Let's get right into it. In this video we'll be looking at the features of Mantis. In future videos we'll be doing tutorials on how to make all this stuff. Let's check it out. So first things first, if you'd like to install the add-on, go to Preferences, Get Extensions, and up in the top right, there's a Repositories tab. Go ahead and add a new remote repository. Type in https colon forward slash forward slash nodes dot tools slash extensions. And go ahead and check for updates if you want to. Now up in the search bar, search for Mantis, and then just click Install and you're good to go. The home page of this project is nodes dot tools. So be sure to check out all the links on there. So let's go ahead and press E to generate this graph. And you can see it's created this little crab guy, and it's also created this rig. You'll also notice that the rig follows the outline that was there before. This is called a meta rig. If you're familiar with using Rigify or Cloud Rig, or just about any other automatic rigging software, then you know that the meta rig is what you use to place the deform bones in the right place so that the rigging software can figure out where to put all of the mechanisms and all of the extra bones that it has to add to make the rig function. Let's look at the functionality of the rig we just created with Mantis Notes. You'll notice that the feet stay on the ground when I move the character's body. This is called IK, or Inverse Kinematics. I've included a switch to turn off IK and use FK. FK is Forward Kinematics, and now, when I move the body, the legs follow it. This is a basic feature that's used in almost every rig. I've implemented the same feature for the arms. I want you to notice that they're asymmetrical, yet the behavior is symmetrical. Mantis makes implementing these kinds of symmetrical asymmetries effortless. You'll immediately notice that the nodes in our Mantis rig are color-coded. We have the orange transform nodes, the green link nodes, and the gray utility nodes, node groups, and schema. These are the five main divisions of node types in Mantis. Transform nodes represent bones, armatures, objects, and anything else that has translation, rotation, and scale. Link nodes represent relationships between bones, such as this inherit node right here, which is a parent-child relationship. Finally, we have utilities, node groups, and schema, which are ways of generating reusable components from nodes. Here we have the root bone and the body bone, and you can see the body is a child of the root. Um, so we have our root, our body, these are the, uh, the mouth pinchers, and these are groups that have the left and the right side of the character. If I were to delete this and regenerate, you can see that now only the right side of the character is there. If I change this R to an L and delete all this and regenerate, you can see that now we have just the left side of the character. And I'll go ahead and restore the other side now. Node groups are an easy way to reuse parts of a rig. You'll also notice that the node groups follow the shape of the meta rig. That enables us to create asymmetrical shapes with symmetrical behavior absolutely effortlessly. You're always going to have to deal with asymmetry in different characters. But handling asymmetry can be very tricky, especially if you make your rigs by hand. And even if you use an auto-rigging solution, you're limited to what the auto-rigging solution is designed to do because it's not easy to edit, since not only do you have to know how to use Python, but you also have to know how to implement your Python solution within Blender's API and the API of your auto-rigging software. Let's take a look inside this node group, and you can see there are four legs and one claw. If we delete two of the legs, you'll notice that both legs disappear for both sides of the crab. You'll also notice that the only input we're changing in the node group is the number associated with the leg. We can get this simple behavior in our node group because our meta rig has a naming convention applied to every bone. So you can see leg 0, leg 1, leg 2, leg 3. Then segment 0, segment 1, segment 2, segment 3. What we have is essentially a grid where the first number selects the leg and the second number selects the segment. Because our naming conventions are so consistent, we can easily use a group of nodes to tell Mantis what name to set for a given bone and which bone to pull out of the meta rig for its matrix. I designed Mantis to make it easy to reuse existing rigs and reproportion them to new characters simply by changing the meta rig. Here you can see we have a new meta rig for a lobster character. Now you can see that the meta rig is a little bit different because the lobster should have a tail. That's okay. If we copy and paste the nodes from the crab rig and then change the names accordingly, it will still generate enough of a lobster that all we really have to deal with is the tail as a separate component. Notice how the lobster has very different proportions from the crab. 
has these two big symmetrical claws instead of the small claws that are asymmetrical, and its body is a much bigger size and its legs are a different shape. But we use the same rig because the behavior is the same, and that's all Mantis is concerned with. It doesn't care at all about the shape of the character. Mantis trees are designed to be easily composable for multiple components. Let's take a look at how that works. Inside of this group, you'll notice that we have a couple bones, and they have a parent-child relationship through the inherit node between them. And in fact, we don't even need the inherit node. We can just drag the X form out to the relationship in, and Mantis will implicitly create the inherit node between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the X form out of the body bone to the group output of the body node group. Now we can easily add another component, the tail, as a node group and make it the child of the body bone, thus composing a more complex rig from basic pieces. So let's review. We were able to transfer the rig from the crab to the lobster because we were using node groups. The node group generated a rig for the lobster with different proportions, but with all of the same features. The claws, the legs, the body, the IK and the FK components with their switches. And we also added a tail to the lobster using node groups to compose the rig. So this brings us to a very important point. Mantis is a way of describing the behavior of a character rig and the relationships between all of the objects in the scene. It has nothing to do with the shape of the character. All of that is stored in the meta rig. Thus, by design, Mantis is the perfect tool for rigging an entire cast of characters with different proportions, with asymmetrical details, and symmetrical details, with unique needs for each character consisting of different node groups that you attach to a common base. And since your rigs are composed of common components, you can easily transfer the animation from one rig to another, and you can rig an entire cast of characters without being forced to use the same skeleton for each character. So let's take a look at this example. I'm replacing crab body with lobster body for the main rig node group. And it's the same except now there's a new switch on this left arm here. Arm broken. And you can see what it does. Poor guy. Anyhow, inside of the node group, it's all the same except for I've replaced this one with a broken arm group, which has a little bit of extra logic in it to handle the broken arm. And just like that, very easily we've made a new rig with a new feature that doesn't break any of our existing animation or anything like that. So let's take a look at the nodes that make up the lobster's tail. You can see that I've repeated the same cluster of nodes over and over again. The one that makes the bone, and the other cluster that makes the object on the tail. Now this isn't a very good way to work. It's quite inefficient, and if I make a mistake in one segment and then duplicate the segments over and over again, I'll have to fix all five of them in order to fix the mistake. And it's very easy to let human error creep in in a situation like that. Enter schema. Schema nodes are like node groups, except they are repeated again and again and again based on a length parameter. Think of each iteration of the schema as a link in a chain, and the schema is the chain. You'll notice that I've added two new nodes to the cluster, copy rotation node, and, well, the inherit node was there before, but I've moved it to the end. That's because I want to put an inherit node between the body and the tail, so that I can make all the tailbones connected to each other, but make the tailbone not connected to the parent. You can see I have not clicked connected there on the node. Now, if we set the schema length to 1 and generate, we'll have one object and one bone, one control. If we set it to 2 and then generate, we'll have 2, and then 3, and then 4, and 5, and so on. But if we try to do 6, there will be an error because there are not 6 metabones, and there are not 6 tail objects. So Mantis will have an error and complain because it's trying to get data out of the scene that does not exist. Yes. Now you'll notice we've got a new tail wiggling behavior on the lobster. That's because of the copy rotation constraint we just added. Remember that the nodes in the schema are all a link in a big chain, and the schema is the chain. So if we had a copy rotation to each link in the chain, then each bone copies from its direct ancestor. And we can affect all of the bones at once by simply editing a single node. Nice. So let's try a few different values for the influence of the copy rotation constraint and see what they do to the lobster's tail. It's nice being able to edit them all at once like this. And just in case you're wondering why the tail is rotating in the opposite direction to the body, it's simply because in the meta rig, I have the tail rolled 180 degrees opposed to the body. So their orientation looks the same, but it's actually flipped a little bit. Mantis can do more than just bones and armatures. It's meant to be a holistic solution to setting up characters composed of many different objects, each with their own parents, children, and deformers. In this example, our barbarian consists of 14 objects the body itself, three clothing objects, a buckler, an axe, a shoulder pauldron, four hair objects, and two eyes. Let's take a look at the nodes that make this happen. You can see here we have an armature to form node. That is our armature modifier in Blender, and the node that creates the object itself. 
We also have this node that fetches the mesh for the object. Think of an object in Blender as a container that holds data of all kinds. The mesh, the material, the modifier stack, animation curves, that sort of thing. All that makes up an object. So what these nodes are doing is pulling data out of the Blender scene and packaging it up into a new object. That way we can use the object in our rig without modifying any of the source data. Let's add some new objects into the tree. When we tell the nodes the name of the meshes, they can fetch the data and create the objects. But look, they're appearing in the wrong place. What's going on? In the original character model, these objects have weird origins and a bunch of unapplied transformations. This is bad practice, but we can work with it. All we have to do is fetch the transforms in a matrix and plug the matrix into our new geometry object node. Then Mantis will generate the objects in the right place. Now that the objects are in the right place, we can see a new problem. They're not following the rig, because they don't have any skin weights. First, let's ask Mantis to use automatic weights. While this is an improvement, you can see that the clothes aren't following the body very well. We've already skinned the body of the character, so let's use Mantis to copy the weights from the body mesh using a hidden helper object. That's much better. Let's have a look at this node. This is the node group which contains the entire logic of the body rig. Inside of it are several more components, these IKFK legs, uh, these IKFK arms, the hands, which are composed of several nodes that make up the palm, and then one, two, three, four fingers and a thumb. And the fingers and thumb have these node groups in them, which create the parent, the control, and the finger bones, respectively. And over here we have like the head and the face, the eyebrows, the eyes, and uh, you get the idea. Now we've connected the bones that represent several different body parts of the character, the output of this node group, which means that we can use them essentially like sockets. And we can name these node sockets whatever we like. Let's take a look at our finished character here, and you can see all these nodes that add simple parent-child relationships with the new objects in the scene. This axe is a child of the hand, as we can see when we turn on the IK switch. Pauldron is a child of the arm, and the other parts also follow. Now since these parts are hard, we use a parent-child relationship since we don't want them to deform, but the clothing has to deform, so it uses the armature modifier using our armature deformer node. And finally we have this ponytail here, which I forgot to apply automatic weights to, so it isn't moving. Let's just do that real quick. And you can see that it's just a piece of the rig that we attach to the main body through a socket. Very simple. Building a character from components like this is the core workflow of Mantis, and the reason why it's so easy to use and easy to extend. This next part of the video is not sped up. I want you to notice how fast it is for Mantis to generate an entire character rig and all of the geometry data. And I think I'll also leave the original audio in place. Delete all that stuff, and I'll press E and it generates everything. It takes about a second, which is really slow as far as I'm concerned. But it's really fast compared to other auto-working solutions. Um, and you can see that when I delete these nodes and then regenerate the graph, object gets deleted. And, you know, I can, I can do that again and do upperarm.r and call that one pauldron. And now when I generate the graph, pauldron comes back. It's a child of the arm bone, as you can see. And that's a wrap for this video. Come back next time for tutorials on how to use Mantis and all the other cool stuff I'll be doing with this channel. Maybe some game design videos, maybe some character art, who knows, new pipeline tools, all kinds of stuff. I've got a million ideas. You can consider this the official relaunch of Node Spaghetti. And as a reminder, Mentis is free and open source software, which is freely available to anybody who wants to download it from my extensions page. So, building this add-on has taken a lot of work, and supporting it is going to take even more work. Uh, in addition to building the add-on, I've also had to set up a bunch of websites and do a whole bunch of stuff on the back end. Uh, not to mention making this video and all of the subsequent videos I'm going to be making. So if you'd like to support what I'm doing here, uh, not only on the Note Spaghetti channel, but also with the software, uh, you can go ahead and grab the Mantis Rigging Nodes component pack, which is my personal collection of over two dozen components for rigging nodes. Uh, which you can reuse and, and compose into any kind of a character rig, whether it be an ordinary humanoid character or uh, any other character like the lobster and, and uh, crab that I was showing in the video. You can also grab the, uh, the source code of the add-on if you want to look at that. That's uh, available to anybody who wants it on GitLab. 
Um, and uh, it'd be even better if you could support me on Locals. In fact, uh, this is what I want more than anything. So, the first 50 or so people who sign on to the Locals as monthly supporters will get the component pack until I can make it a Content Plus feature. And I'm also going to be posting Treehive stuff there every week. What is Treehive? Oh, Treehive is my Gumroad page where I sell extremely high quality uh, 3D scan tree assets. And I'm going to be expanding this to other kinds of forests and stuff. Look at the quality on this. It's incredible. It looks just like the real thing. Because it is the real thing. So, um... The locals will have both the tree hive and some of the Gumroad products as benefits to anybody that signs on for, uh, I think it's $3 a month or more. So go ahead and do that. And uh, you know what else you get on locals? You'll get uh, personal feedback on your rigs and help with uh, using Mantis and stuff like that. Especially since I haven't got the tutorials out yet. Um, this is the right place to get support in the meantime. Uh, I should be able to get some tutorials done on a weekly basis. Um, so I, I'd also appreciate you supporting the channel through Locals or by, uh, if nothing else, subscribing to me on YouTube. <laughs> Look, I'm subscribed. I think this is really cool. I'm sure you probably agree if you watched it through to the end. And uh, I want to change the way people rig stuff in Blender. And I want to build a way for them to share their rigs a lot easier than sending Blend files around. And I think this node tree is going to be revolutionary in the way people rig stuff and the way people share their rigs sell them buy them reuse them i want you to be a part of making that a big success and this is your opportunity so go ahead and click on all the links they'll be in the description of the video and uh, get all the benefits of being a local supporter thank you all for watching the video and have a wonderful night or morning or day or evening or whatever they have on your planet